And this question asks us to draw Lewis structures for uh, uh, five different molecules. I'm not going to show you the answers to all of them, but I'll just do a couple of them. This first one is carbon monoxide. Uh, as I did tell earlier, the way you draw a Lewis structure is you first of all count up the total number of valence electrons that you're dealing with. Carbon's in column 4A of the periodic table, so it has four valence electrons. Oxygen is in uh, column 6A, so it has six valence electrons, so I have a total of ten valence electrons. The next step that you do is you try to figure out how these atoms are bonded together. Now, because there are only two bonds, I, or sorry, two, L, or two atoms in this molecule, I can uh, just draw a single bond between them. <clears throat> so remember that every time you draw a straight line, that represents two electrons. So I've already used two. I have eight left. So what I'm going to try and do is throw those eight down and see if I can uh, give everyone a full octet. So I'll go ahead and just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or I could uh, put electrons probably on the more electronegative atom first. I got one, two, so two, four, six, eight, and then, and then I guess I have ten there. So I think that's ten total electrons, two, four, six, eight, ten. Do those elements all feel like they have uh, eight electrons or full octet? No, not really. Well, not at all. Oxygen kind of does, because there are two electrons here, and it's got four, six, eight around it, but carbon does not. <clears throat> so the next step, then, is if you cannot achieve a feeling of full octetedness for both of the atoms in the molecule, or all of the atoms in the molecule, then try forming double or triple bonds. So what I'll do now is I'll take two of these electrons, I'll just pick arbitrarily these two, and I'll put them right here. Now, uh, instead of putting them as dots, though, I'm going to change them into a bond. Now, does everyone feel as if it has uh, uh, eight electrons around it? Well, the carbon has two here, four, six, and oxygen has two, four, six, eight. I'm getting closer, but I'm not quite there yet. So I'm going to form another uh, extra bond. So I'm going to take two of these electrons, and I'll put it down here in the middle. Now, carbon feels like it has two, four, six, eight. Keep in mind, once again, that each of these lines represents two electrons that are being shared. If you wanted to draw out all of the electrons uh, in this triple bond, you draw them out like this. And then you could notice that carbon feels like it has all of these eight electrons around it, as does oxygen. So I've now laid down ten electrons. I've got a set of lone pairs on the carbon, set of lone pairs on the oxygen. Uh, everybody feels as if it has a full octet. So that would be the Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. I'll go back and erase this just leaving behind the uh, straight lines that we had here. Now I'll do uh, part D. In part D, I've got arsenic uh, oxide, and it's got a negative uh, three charge. So first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> count up my total number of valence electrons. The arsenic is in column uh, 5A of the periodic table, which means it has five valence electrons. Oxygen has, uh, is in 6A, so it has six valence electrons, and there are three individual oxygens, so I have six valence electrons from each of those three all being brought to the table. And then, you notice I've got a charge. That charge represents three extra electrons added to the system. So I add that all together, I've got 5 plus 18 plus 3 is 26 electrons, I believe. Hopefully I've done my math right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now I've got 26 total electrons. So that's the first step. Figure out how many total valence electrons you've got. Next step is to uh, try and figure out who is bonded to whom and lay them all out bondage-wise. Did I say bondage? I don't know. Let's start out with this one. Usually the most, or the least electronegative atom, in this case arsenic, is going to be the one in the middle. So we'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> then we'll draw out a single line to each of these three oxygens. Each line represents two electrons. So I've got two, four, six laid down. I've got 20 left. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw down the remaining 20 electrons on all the atoms, attempting to give them all eight electrons. So we'll go here and go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and then, for my 20, I can throw them on the arsenic. Does that have 26 total electrons in the system? I've got 8 here, 16 here, 24 here, plus another 2, that's 26. That is going to be the Lewis structure for this molecule. And often what we do for charged species is we'll write brackets around them and then write 3 negative to indicate that that entire molecule has a charge of 3 minus. <clears throat> Looking at this last one, I've got H2SO3. Count up the total number of valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. There are two of them. Sulfur's in column 6A, so it has six electrons, as is oxygen. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, and, and there are three oxygens here. So I'm going to go three times six. I add all of that up. That gives me 24 plus 2 is 26 electrons, just like the previous example. Now I'm going to try and figure out a bonding pattern. 
Uh, hydrogens are never going to be a central atom because hydrogens only want two electrons, not eight electrons. So you aren't going to be able to have multiple bonds surrounding a hydrogen. So I always put them on the periphery. Generally speaking, aside from that, I put the least electronegative atom in this pile up, which is sulfur in this case, excluding the hydrogens at least, in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and put sulfur in the middle. And I'll put a, a bond of oxygen, another bond of oxygen. This might be kind of confusing. It states in this problem that hydrogen is bonded to oxygen. So I guess what we could do <clears throat> is we could put a bond to one oxygen up here, another bond to another oxygen, another bond to another oxygen, and then we could throw some hydrogens on here. I get out my hydrogens out here, for example, and it tells us in the problem the hydrogens are bonded to oxygens. So what I've done here is I've got two, four, six, eight, ten electrons laid down. I've got 16 left to play with, so I'm going to throw them down on the oxygens to try to achieve a full octet. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, and I've got two more uh, to get 16. I can throw those right there. Let's see if everyone in this lineup feels as if it has uh, a full octet. Uh, well, it, it, with the exception of hydrogen, hydrogens only want a two tet. So the hydrogens both have two electrons right here and here. They feel like they have a two tet, no problem. Uh, each of the oxygens has two, four, six, eight around it. And I can go ahead and draw a circle there. Uh, and this guy also ha feels as if it has eight around it, so does this one. And the sulfur has two, four, six in this one set of lone pairs, which also feels as if it has eight around it. Is everybody happy? Feel like it has a full octet? Absolutely. So that is a correct Lewis structure. There's another correct Lewis structure for this one that involves a double bond. I'm not going to show it to you, but you're welcome to look it up if you want.